We have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no jam. Well, had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cast you. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armour diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armour diet. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the people of your head? Oh my God. Yes. Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tied the religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armour diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armour diet. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Why they hate? 
hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your second morning wake up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A Shakur, and Twitter at DGoddess27. And if you don't like what the Queen is cooking, you already know what to do. All right. Hello, Najia, Juju B. Okay, Courtney J is in the house. The Prince of Paraphernalia, Honey69, Claudette, Queen Sam, Nessie X is here. Okay, so let's get back into it, Pearly. I see you, beloved. Okay, Terry Hartfield, Dervis, Queen Sam, Jeff ATL. Shout out to uh, my moderators putting in work and shout out to all of my loyal royals. Okay, uh, Lady Sigmetrions. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Okay, says the black family needs to, uh, the black family all do stop swirling abortions. Well, I agree. I agree, beloved. Thank you for that insight and thank you for your contribution to the channel. Peace, love, and blessings. Okay, yeah, I absolutely agree. As a matter of fact, I think I posted a video about that or showed a video about that last week when Angela Stanton King was talking about how they put all these uh, abortion clinics in our neighborhoods, uh, but then they give the immigrants who come here illegally all this money and stuff. Okay, for their children, please pay attention. Meeting them at the borders and all of that. Okay, so listen, I have breaking news, beloveds, okay? I have breaking news. That's why I'm a few minutes late. This just came in about, about two minutes ago, and this is bad news. I just want you all to pay attention. This is bad news because here's what I just found out. Uh, Baltimore's key bridge collapses after a ship hits it. Construction crew is missing, Okay. This came out like two minutes ago. So it says a massive search effort was underway Tuesday uh, for six construction workers who were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore when it was struck by a large cargo vessel and collapsed in the uh, uh, Patapsco River, shutting down a critical artery for East Coast shipping, according to authorities. They say James Wallace, chief of the Baltimore City Fire Department, said at a news conference uh, around 1.30 a.m., a vessel leaving the port of Baltimore struck the key bridge, causing it to collapse in seconds. Footage shows the cargo ship smashed into one of the columns before the bridge snapped, uh, hit the water, and then partially fell on the ship, where a burst of flames and smoke could be seen rising into the night sky. Several vehicles were on the bridge at the time of the impact and were plunged into the Patapsco River. Uh, there were also multiple con uh, contractors on the bridge who were repairing potholes, uh, according to Maryland Transportation Secretary Paul Widerfeld. This is all sad. Like, I hope these people are okay. Wallace said that two people were rescued in the initial hours of the search. One was unharmed and the other remains in very serious condition. The crew said, or the crew that was on the ship when it collided with the bridge, remains on the vessel, which needs to be assessed for damage before rescuers can board it. A senior U.S. official told USA Today that the ship apparently lost power a few minutes before striking the bridge. Accidents like these, known as marine casualties, are not uncommon, according to a source. They say in a leash, uh, they say, um, hold on, um, this is clearly a typo. Anyway, they go on to say uh, there was an immobile object that struck when an immobile object is struck by a ship uh, that occurs every 10 years or so. They said the investigation of the power loss will be on a high priority and could be related to mechanical failure. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said in a news conference that preliminary investigations indicate that this was an accident and not an intentional act of terror, and he did not provide further details. So... They say this is devastating to the city. Uh, Greg Trechard, age 43, awoke Tuesday to a flurry of text messages and missed calls from his out-of-state relatives checking on him after hearing about the key, key bridge collapse. He says, I've driven over it 100 times, and now to see that it's gone is pretty crazy. Okay, uh, he's an auditor, and he said that he then tried to make his way to Fort Armistead Park, where he'd come 
many times before to take photos of the bridge at sunrise and sunset but the normally quick but the normally quick drive took nearly 40 minutes due to the traffic detours and a police roadblock next to a royal farms uh which uh, a convenience store about a half about a mile and a half from the park that stopped him from getting any closer to the scene he said it's a blow it's devastating to the city it's devastating to port traffic and everything they're trying to do to revitalize the shipping industry in Maryland and to keep it all going. This is all devastating. Okay, so somebody that I follow on TikTok actually did a video about this. Hold on. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Let me see if I can get that video up real quick. Hold on. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to send this to my email real quick. Oh, well, this is bad news. This is definitely bad news, okay? Okay, here we go. Just a second. Hold on, beloveds. Okay, I'm about to share the screen in just a moment. I'm trying to upload this video real quick. This is all crazy. Here we go. So I just got home from doing the morning show. We had breaking news. Uh, fucking bridge in Maryland got struck by a cargo ship <laughs> and just utterly fucking annihilated. Like show you the video this is like one of the craziest fucking things i've ever seen in my life if you look right there you see the cargo ship hitting and then boom the, the whole fucking, fucking thing just falls down like know. it looks like a fucking movie it's crazy that's fucking crazy it like doesn't even look real it's fucking wild man it was a four-lane fucking interstate highway coming out of Baltimore. One of the main fucking entries and exits into the city. They said it was a, like a huge part of the Baltimore Beltway. It was a 185-foot drop into 47-degree waters at 1.30 in the morning. Pitch fucking black out there. Uh, they said there's at least 20 people missing. There was a road crew working on the bridge at the time. There were cars on the bridge at the time. Uh, they pulled two people out of the water so far. One of them got sent to the hospital in serious condition. The other one miraculously was unharmed, uh, even refused medical treatment because he was fine. Um, it's fucking terrifying. It is fucking terrifying. Like, holy shit. That is absolutely awful. Did you all see how that bridge collapsed? Did you all see that? Those poor construction workers, okay? And there's people missing. They pulled like two people out of the water. One of them is in critical condition. And there were cars on the bridge. Yeah, this is real sad. That was scary to watch. Imagine having been on that bridge. Oh, Lord. I just pray for the people that were on there. I hope everybody is okay. This is absolutely terrible. Leon said they say several people are missing. I think he said 20. I believe he said 20 people were missing. This is all sad. Pretty Wings said it ran directly into the bridge. 20 currently missing. Yep, 20 people. Reggie said it looked like a demolition. It absolutely did. All hell no said never heard, uh, never heard of that, never heard of a bridge uh, fear, but I am shook now. Or never had a bridge fear, but I'm shook now. Let me tell y'all something. I've always been afraid of driving over bridges, okay? Absolutely. All right, when I go to Kentucky to visit relatives, I drive across the bridge to Indiana to go to the casino sometimes, and I hate driving over that bridge, especially at night. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I have that phobia since I saw that movie, The Mothman Prophecies. Y'all remember that? The Mothman Prophecies, when that bridge collapsed with all those people on it and they went into the water. 
I mean, I absolutely cannot. I absolutely cannot. It's a no for me. I actually hated Bridges before that, but I definitely hate them now. That's all I'm saying. I love her says, I hate the Bridges here. They constantly, they're constantly doing construction on them. And one of them was falling apart a few years ago. Yeah, that's another problem. Because just like that bridge that I hate traveling across in Kentucky, my sister called me like, I think it was last year sometime and said that they had numerous things they had to fix on that bridge. Or maybe it was the year before. But yeah, definitely need some repairs. This is all crazy. All right, Leon said accidents happening everywhere. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into it because I hate to hear that. So let's talk about this teacher who was fired for being a rapper. Now, if you ask me, the parent was clearly hate. I mean, they were clearly hate because what did her rap career have to do with her teaching? So let's get into it. Taylor teacher fired for rapping as a second job. Now they say, was it justified? Well, I don't think it was. And she's getting a lawyer and I hope she wins because she needs to sue them. This woman had literally just one teacher of the month. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this report. Well, Dominique Brown earned Teacher of the Month honors, and then two months later she was fired, but it wasn't about anything she did in the classroom. She says a parent complained about her rap career, which was off the clock. By now, Drippin' Honey's music video, Drippin' 101, has been seen by tens of thousands across numerous social media platforms. And it combines two of her passions, rapping and some of the students she's taught. That's right, a U.S. history teacher who's moonlighting as a rapper. But last month, she was forced out of her teaching job, and it started with a parent's complaint. That's when the first meeting was with my dean and the principal, and they were just telling me, like, hey, um, a parent said that they see your social media and that you're a black influence because you're a rapper. Drippin' Honey's real name is Dominique Brown. She says that the parent continued to complain, even though the educator was named Teacher of the Month. Despite asking for a complaint in writing, Dominique says she never received it. And Dominique believes that she was discriminated against. I was like, hey, well, can we tell that parent to come in and see professionalism, see me in a classroom, see me after school, see me at all the games, see me dropping kids off every day, buying food, doing all these things. Can they come see me in my element before they try to say I'm unprofessional in it? Was there at any point anything that was brought up that said, your rap career may have, the lyrics that you use may have been a bad influence on some of the students that you had. Well, the parents would just stay anonymous and she didn't really give too much detail on what she did or didn't like and the school didn't give me too much detail either. Music is part of the culture from Motown. This is what we do. So it's not like it's unheard of. It's the culture. And when you, when you look like me, you just understand it a little more better that it's not that I'm trying to deter these kids from stopping their dreams. In a statement, a spokesperson for Taylor Preparatory High School, which is a charter school, said they're aware of Brown's allegations, but student and employee privacy rights limit what they can say. The statement went on to say, quote, student well-being remains at the forefront of everything we do, and we will continue fostering a distraction-free teaching and learning environment focused on student success. If I was a horrible teacher, y'all would have dropped me the day it was a problem. You, did you ever feel that they were transparent enough for you? Absolutely not. If there ever was an opportunity, Taylor said, hey, look, we want you back. Would you consider it? Um, no, I just want this to be an example for them to do better. Dominique says that she's in the process of trying to seek out an attorney and take some legal action. In Taylor, I'm Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News. Okay, I'm sorry. They can miss her with it. Okay, they can miss her with it. Uh, on purpose said her ratchet lyrics are the reason she got fired. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay, that's not why she got fired. Her lyrics could be as ratchet as they want to be at the end of the day. The, the same parent who complained, I'll guarantee you, they allow their child or children to listen to Sexy Red. I'm sorry. Her, her lyrics don't have anything to do with it. Okay, at the end of the day, even if her lyrics are ratchet, who cares? She's not doing the rap in the school, in the classroom. So she shouldn't be able to do something outside of that if she wants to. How is that unprofessional when she's not at work? How is that unprofessional? The parent who told on her was hating. And how you know they were hating is because, for one, they didn't even want to give their name. They didn't want to write a statement because she requested a written statement. And how you know that she's doing her job is because she was uh, she was titled 
teacher of the month two months ago and now she's fired yes she was absolutely doing her job okay so i don't care what her lyrics said at the end of the day she was doing her job in the classroom and i want you all to pay attention because this is bullshit okay i don't know why anybody would think that she deserved to be fired because of wretched lyrics we have teachers who don't look like me who will be in the classroom and do certain things to students who look like me such as call them n-words and they don't get fired they don't get fired okay they don't get fired they get suspended that's what they get their teaching licenses should be revoked in some of these cases that i've talked to you about but they didn't get fired so she's fired because she's a rapper with alleged ratchet lyrics please miss me with it please miss me with it that's right laverne said she wasn't harming anyone okay like seriously at the end of the day if she was not my skin tone and had the complexion for protection would they have fired her for that no because they would have said that doesn't have anything to do with the school and i want you all to pay attention to that statement that the school gave in that statement they specifically said they continue to put the students first and uh, avoid distractions or whatever. They threw in the word distraction to try to legitimize and justify why they fired her because that's the only thing they can come up with. Oh, she's a distraction because parents are complaining. They can't say or tie her rapping to her being ineffective as a school teacher. They can't do that. And they specifically can't do it because they've never complained about her work and they've, ne and they've never had any parents complain about her work or students. And then also because she won teacher of the month just recently so i'm sorry yes it's a double standard absolutely prince of paraphernalia at the end of the day that woman should not have been fired okay that's just ignorant to me and it's extremely racist as far as i'm concerned because i guarantee you if they had been karen becky amy or heather they wouldn't have done that like I said, I've told you all, you know, you all know that I've reported on stories a myriad of times with these teachers calling kids who look like me the N-word. Did they get fired? What about that coach who cursed out that, that teenager? Okay, do they get fired? No, they don't. There is a double standard in this country and everybody knows that. Okay, at least we all should, especially people who look like me. That's right. Register mind your business school board. Okay. Re-educated social sounds and feels racially biased. It is. It is. Okay. Queen Sam said Becky, Heather, and Heidi too busy sleeping with their students. Exactly. Okay. But she's fired for rapping on the side. Her students love her. You saw the students in her video. And here's the thing. That video that she filmed with the students, she filmed that video the day they fired her. The day they fired her, they said that she walked outside and did that video with the students. The students love that lady. So apparently she's a good teacher, okay? That's what the parents should be worried about instead of worried about what she's doing on the sidelines. Here's the thing. I want you all to pay attention. Now, here's the double standard because do you all not remember that I literally just reported to you last week about that judge, a whole Karen, okay, who was a judge and then she was on a website looking for threesomes. She was on a website looking for threesomes. There was two of them. Now, one of them got fired, but that was only because she had SES at the courthouse, had a threesome at the courthouse. But the other one who's on that website, she didn't get fired, sitting up there on a the whole website wearing lingerie. But you're a judge. I'm sorry, that's not unethical. That's not a problem. But a black woman rapping after she leaves her job at the school is a problem. Please miss me with it. I don't care how wretched her, her uh, lyrics were. Like I said, these same people who complain will be having their kids listen to Dusty Red. Okay, that's just what it is. And I hope she wins when she sues them. Okay? I hope she wins when she sues them because they had no justification as far as I'm concerned for firing her. She did nothing wrong. Now, if they'd have said, oh, she was rapping ratchet lyrics in the classroom and this, that, and the third, well, that's different because that would have been unprofessional. She wasn't doing it in the classroom. And when you're not at work, are you supposed to always be professional? I'm sorry, depending on your position, like if you're a judge, perhaps, okay? At the end of the day, certain things you shouldn't do that are improprieties, uh, but at the end of the day, they could miss me with it. Love Her said, were those teachers fired for having those students licking their feet? Exactly, no, they were not. 
No, they were not. They weren't even blamed for it, beloved. Remember, they said that the students wanted to do it. Uh, so you mean to tell me that the school's been doing this for years? This is just the first time they got caught. But they've been doing that for years. And so every year the students want to do it? Of course not. It's the staff encouraging them to do it. It's the staff bringing that up, okay? That's what it is. No, none of them got fired. Thank you. Very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. And then Queen Sam said the police aren't always professional on and off duty. Exactly. Exactly. Now, as I said, these Karen teachers be having whole OnlyFans pages. Yes, they do. Yes. Do they get fired? I think I reported on one last year of a teacher having an OnlyFans page. Did she get fired? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So anyway, it is what it is, honey. At the end of the day, it's a whole double standard. And stuff like that just really irks my nerves. Okay? Live and let live. If she's not harming anybody, why are they pressed? Anyway, let's talk about this next story. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Jury didn't even need to hear. A jury didn't even need an hour to convict two for cold-blooded Duncan drive through murder of Philly teacher, all because of an ended affair. Let me put the picture up on the screen. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance, beloveds. A Pennsylvania jury didn't even need an hour on Thursday to find two defendants guilty of murdering a Philadelphia elementary school teacher in front of her 11-year-old son in a Duncan drive through under a year ago. Rachel King was just 35 years old on April the 11th of 2023 when she was shot multiple times and killed as she sat in the driver's seat of her Ford Edge and as her son, identified by family as Jalen, sat in the back seat of the car outside the uh, Cheltenham Township Duncan location. Now they say from the start, Montgomery County investigators were operating under the theory that this was a targeted murder and it didn't take long for them to identify Zaki Stephen Ala uh, King, age 34, and Julie Jean, age 35, as the suspects. Authorities said they soon learned that the cold-blooded killing was a murder for hire that Jean orchestrated out of pure jealousy. Montgomery County District Attorney Kevin Steele revealed that Ala Hakeem, the gunman, is a cousin of a man who fathered Gene's three children. Gene Steele says that, uh, they say Gene Steele had an affair with King's longtime boyfriend, William Hayes, and, and when that affair ended, she harassed both King and Hayes in text messages and calls and plotted to kill the victim with Ala King's, uh, Al Kahim's help. This is all so nefarious. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out something real quick, beloveds. So that's the victim in the middle. The other two thugs on the left and right are the culprits. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. They say this cold-blooded killing of Rachel King was a targeted murder of an innocent person planned by these two defendants and horrifically carried out in front of King's son, according to D.A. Steele. It's a tragic killing of a good person, all because of an ended affair. Prosecutors said significant video evidence showed that Ella Hakeem watched King outside her home days before the murder, followed her to the Duncan drive through in a Mercury State in a Mercury Sable on the day of the murder walked up to King's window and then pulled the trigger multiple times, killing her. The Mercury Sable, invest, uh, the Mercury Sable, according to investigators, was just one piece of evidence that sealed the defendant's fate. Jean bought the car in her name with Ala Hakeem less than two weeks before the murder. Idiots. Worse yet for the defendants, cell phone evidence showed that Ala Hakeem and Jean planned the shooting over a period of several weeks, according to prosecutors. This is all so crazy. They just did this to this woman in front of her son. Like, these are heartless devils. They say very soon after Jean saved Ala Hakeem's contact info, Ala Hakeem saved a screen capture to his phone of a Google map of the victim's apartment complex uh, with a pen marking King's exact residence and red arrow showing a route to travel directly to the victim's residence. Uh, according to prosecutors. Now, also of note, on Ala Hakeem's phone were two photographs. 
One was the victim's photo displayed on a cell phone held by a female uh, that was believed to be Jean. And the photo was taken on February the 25th of 2023 at 2.17 p.m. Less than 30 minutes after Al Hakim shared his uh, real-time location with Jean from, for them to meet up. Authorities said Jean's last-ditch effort to delete incriminating text messages uh, just 13 minutes prior uh, to being interviewed by the cops on the day of the, after the murder didn't succeed either. Rachel King's brother, Alan King III, told Law and Crime after the shooting that his sister, a, his sister, a pastor's daughter, taught for a decade at Grover Cleveland Elementary Schools. He said uh, he called for the defendants to face the death penalty, citing the heinous nature of the crime. That's what the death penalty was made for, he says. Now, two months prior to Rachel King's murder, however, Governor Josh Shapiro announced uh, that he would follow the policy of his gubernatorial predecessor and would not resume executions. A moratorium on the death penalty has been placed has been in place in Pennsylvania for nearly a decade, and the ACLU said that the Commonwealth hasn't uh, executed anyone since 1999. On Thursday, both Gene and Al Hakim were found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy, and it didn't take long for the jury to reach the decision uh, that led to life sentences. They say the jury took less than an hour to find Julie Jean and Zaki Al Hakim guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy in the killing of Rachel King. While Gene's attorney has reportedly said the defense will appeal, claiming the evidence just wasn't there, King's family said that justice was served. King's son, Jalen, said, I feel better. And this is after family members told him that Gene and Allah Hakim would be behind bars for the rest of their life. They say the boy's aunt, Ayana uh, King, reportedly said this. So this is also said. They killed this poor woman right in front of her son, low down and dirty. Okay, I just want y'all to pay attention. Sometimes it be your own people. Sometimes to be your own people. Now let's talk about this nefarious daycare worker. Daycare owner pleads guilty to abusing an 11 year old and possessing about 9,800 images of child corn with a P. Let me put him up on the screen, devil. And here's what it says. A New York daycare operator pleaded guilty on Thursday to Essie actually abusing an 11 year old boy in his care. The Department of Justice said uh, this in a, in a press statement uh, that Silfredo Castillo Martinez, age 34, possessed almost 10,000 images of child sexual abuse material. According to court documents, Google gave the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children a tip on April 25th of 2022 that a user had uploaded what appeared to be child sexual abuse material. Dirty devil. Authorities used the Google account to track down the defendant at his home on Decatur Avenue in the New York City borough of the Bronx. Uh, from there, he ran a daycare, licensed to care for children ages six weeks to 12 years old. Now, this is all sick. Okay, now what have I told you all repeated, repetitively? What have I told you all repetitively? Uh, Leon Gardner said, Queen, you know it, okay? What have I told you all repetitively? I have told you all that these people who prey upon children will very often have careers that put them in close proximity to people's children. I said there'll be daycare workers like him. He owns a daycare. I said there'll be school teachers. There'll be coaches for Little League. They'll work for the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. This is all by design. This is what they do. Okay, I learned this when I was in college for criminal justice. This is what they do. Please pay attention. So it goes on to say that when investigators executed a search warrant at his home, they seized electronic devices that continued or that contained about 9,800 images of uh, child abuse material in addition to images and video depicting the 11-year-old's abuse. Investigators determined that the abuse happened in Castillo Martinez's bedroom. Now, in speaking to authorities post Miranda, the defendant admitted uploading those abuse materials uh, to his Google Drive account, according to documents. Castillo Martinez faces a minimum of 15 years in prison and a maximum of 30 in his sentencing uh, in his sentencing to take place June of uh, uh, on June 25th. So he uploaded these images to his Google Drive account. How dumb are you? But let me continue. I'm glad he was a fool. 
So Fredo Castillo Martinez exploited the trust placed in him uh, as a daycare provider by sexually abusing one of the minor children under his care and by forcing that child to perform these, you know, nefarious acts on him, shall I say, okay, according to U.S. Attorney Damian Williams of the Southern District of New York. Additionally, Castillo Martinez had nearly 10,000 images depicting child corn with a P uh, in his possession, all the while caring for the children on a daily basis. Castillo Martinez's conduct is reprehensible, and he now faces more than a decade in prison for his crimes. I'm sorry, a decade? He should get as many years as as many images as he had on his computer. 9,800. Now, right? Which means life. That's what he should get. These people are sick. These people are absolutely nefarious. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Now let's talk about this man who took out a whole family tree. He killed an entire branch of our family tree. Man who massacred neighbor's entire family after teen allegedly exposed himself to the wife and daughter learns his fate. Now I could see him being mad about that, but you're going to take out the whole family? All crazy, including nefarious. A 32-year-old man in, Ohio, in Idaho will spend the rest of his life behind bars for breaking into his neighbor's home and massacring all four members of the family, including two teenagers. This is all so crazy and demented, okay? on five, He did this on Father's Day in order to execute vengeance after one of the teens allegedly exposed themselves to his wife and daughter. First Judicial District Court Judge Barbara Dugan on Monday ordered uh, Major, Major John Kaler to serve a sentence of life in a state correctional facility without the chance of parole uh, for the 2023 quadruple murder of Kenneth uh, Gardapi, age 65, his daughter, Kena Gardapi, uh, 41, and her two children, Devin Smith, age 18, and Iken Smith, age 16. Kaler, who claimed that he snapped after the 18-year-old victim allegedly exposed himself to Kaler's wife and young daughter in December, pleaded guilty to four counts and uh, of second-degree murder over the violent rampage. During Monday's hearing, Dugan's upbraided, uh, Dugan's up, Dugan upbraided Kalar, calling his killing spree a particular heinous event. Now, prior to the sentence being uh, prior to the sentence being formally handed down, several of the victim's family members were permitted to read impact statements. Uh, they say he killed an entire branch of our family tree. This is what David Silva, the grandfather of Aiken and Devin Smith, reportedly said. Never any great grandchildren to watch grow up. I lost my best friend. Aiken Smith. He spent hundreds of hours volunteering throughout the community. An entire beautiful family taken by one person. This is all so sad. Jerry Silva, the mother of Kina Guardape, uh, or Guardape, told the court that her family lost three generations, adding that she had not seen, heard, or touched her kids in months since the murders. Uh, Kenneth Guardape's brother, Joe Guardape, read from a handwritten three-page statement. Uh, from Idaho. He said, what a man you are. Not only did you destroy my family, but yours as well. You said you were protecting your children. Let me ask you, who's protecting them now? Exactly. Some people are just so stupid, okay? This is what happens when you allow your emotions to take the wheel. All right, you have to be able to keep your emotions in check. That's what you have to do. All right, you have to kill the ego. When people do stuff like, you know, they say in the Bible that pride goes before the fall. This is what happens. This is absolutely what happens. Because now he's set up there and taken this family out and says he's protecting your family. But now you're going to be in prison for the rest of your life. What is your family supposed to do? After comparing the loss of his family to the pain he endured while fighting in the Vietnam War, Joe Gardapi continued to admonish Kalor over what, he, what the convicted killer did to his brother and the rest of their family. He said, you viciously massacred and mutilated Kenneth Gardapi with, large, with large amounts of lead bullets. You decided to be judge and jury. You decided to play God. You decided to take matters into your own hands. You decided it was okay to take the lives of four of my family members. 
Now, as previously reported, deputies with the Shoshone County Sheriff's Office at about 7.20 p.m. on Sunday, June 18th of 2023, responded to a 911 call reporting that multiple people had been shot and killed inside a residence in the 500 block of West Brown Avenue in Kellogg, Idaho, uh, which is about 50 miles from the state's western border with Washington. Now, upon arriving at the scene, first responders said they took a 31-year-old man who was believed to be connected to the deaths. Uh, they took him into custody. He was later identified as Taylor. Now, in, they took him into custody and later charged him with the four murders. Investigators said that the shooting happened after a dispute between neighbors occurred. The four victims all lived in the lower apartment of a duplex while Taylor and his family lived in the upstairs apartment. The families had only shared the space for a few weeks prior to this incident. According to a copy of probable cause, a, a copy of the probable cause affidavit obtained by Law and Crime, the massacre occurred less than a week after Kaler and his family filed a report accusing Devin Smith of indecent exposure. In the police report, Kaler's wife said that Devin, uh, on June the 13th, stood fully nude in his ground level bedroom window and uh, choked his chicken in front of her and her young daughter while they were playing outside. This is all so sick. OK, we responded to the call, investigated the call, and the report was done that day and submitted to the prosecutor's office for charges. Uh, this is what Kellogg Police Chief Paul Twitt said after the incident. He said, I stand by what my officers did and he did everything he could at the time. Nobody could have foreseen anything like this. Following Kaler's arrest, authorities say he confessed to the killing of the four family members. He explained that he tried to speak with Kina Gardapi and her father about the teen allegedly exposing himself, but became angry when the family did not appear to take the issue seriously. Kaler said that he finally just snapped and lost it, and then he did something about it. The indictment stated that all four slayings were a means of Kaler to execute vengeance. The bodies of Gardapi were found of the Gardapis were found just outside the rear entrance of the home while the Smith brothers were located inside the home. Each of the victims suffered a gunshot wound to the head with a 45 caliber handgun that authorities say they recovered from the scene. Oh, crazy. Now, I could, like I said, I could see why he's ticked, he was ticked off, but to take out the whole family for what one person did? Yeah, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Prince of Paraphernalia said, who's going to protect his wife and daughter now? Idiot. Exactly. Okay. So, Mr. Mystical Black Brown said he didn't know that he assumed, he didn't know that he assumed too much. Anyway, this is all crazy. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. Hold on, beloveds. Okay, so now let's talk about Nickelodeon. Let's talk about Nickelodeon because um, one of the people who was a child actor named Allie, she posted a video talking about her experience. Uh, so let's get into it. Just another woman said, but they just want us to forgive. Oh, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. You know how that goes. Absolutely, beloved. Okay, so like I said, this is a, a woman named Allie who was a child star on Nickelodeon. And here's what she had to say. Hey, babe, it's me again. Okay, question for you. When someone asks you if you want the good news or the bad news first, which one do you choose? I naturally lean towards always asking for the good first. I don't know why. Oh my God, my hair. Do you see? I'm stressed. Why? Because I'm watching the... I don't know who that is, but it's the Quiet On Set documentary. Um, I had to. Like, we were in a Dan Warp, Dan Schneider pedophile show, but um, we went through trauma. I went through trauma. Um, particularly, I had to stop. I don't know who that is. I have to rewind and see because my mind's been wandering to this one, multiple, multiple times, but uh, and actually multiple episodes, but um, there was an episode where Rosalina, um, cheated on that uh, and kind of kissed a French guy or she didn't cheat but like they were it, it was a scripted show and a lot of people thought it was a lot of kids thought that it was a documentary in real life and people particularly girls wanted to fight me in real life like I didn't have fans because they thought it was real life and that I kissed this greasy 
to board. I'm sorry to this man, but I did not want to kiss him. Also, guys, I'm 4'11". He's a 30-year-old man. Do you, just, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't even watch it. It gave me the ick. I couldn't. And it honestly gives me PTSD. I'm watching this um, Quiet On Set documentary, and it's talking about how integral and vital it is to create, especially when it's like a kid's cast, to create an environment where kids feel comfortable to say no, or I don't feel comfortable with this. And then I'm like, yeah, maybe they do express that though. It's also more important to create an environment that listens to the kids and actually does not make them do things when they don't want to do them because they made me kiss this 30 plus year old man when i was like what 14 15 um i told them many times i didn't want to do it my mom was very against it and they just pretty much made me feel like i was gonna lose my job and like be fired um if i didn't do it um and it was weird Think about Naked Brothers Band and like, it was great, but also there was aspects that it wasn't. And it was a highly nepotism, nepo kids. Everybody knew each other cast, more or less, except for me. So I always felt like I was on the outs, like Nat and Alex were brothers. And then Thomas, David, everybody, they were all friends. Kasim and I were externally hired. Jesse was their cousin, Polly was, the director producer writer michael was the uh dad in the show dad in real life like um it was it was a from what i'm understanding probably the most healthiest set out of all the nickelodeon shows however it well it did have a lot of toxic and not so healthy aspects and yeah they made me kiss this guy multiple times and then i always got hate for it and it was like ptsd and trauma but that's my, that's my quiet on set story, apart from the taking my first kiss away from me. Okay, bye. Okay, does anybody notice that she acts very weird? Okay, she acts very weird. Did anyone notice that? And as do a lot of these child stars when they become adults. Okay, but she said they made her kiss a 30-something-year-old man when she was 14 or 15. I want y'all to pay attention. This is all sick. Okay, Miss J said nervously weird. Yes, exactly. A, a re-educated soul said awkward. Yes. This is all crazy. Laverne said, we've been in, in the dark a long time. And these kids, uh, with these kids shows, I wonder about the Popeye Club in, back in the day. Let me tell you something. It's all crazy. Terry said, still in... Uh, stealing, taking children's innocence. That's what makes it spiritual, using their energy. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Okay, Deronda said, extremely sick, Queen. Mm -hmm. Queen Sam said, he didn't feel bad about it. Oh, I'm sure he didn't. Here's the thing. I want you all to pay attention. This happens all of the time, people. This happens all of the time, honey. Y'all need to pay attention because it clearly does. You know how I know? There's another video I wanted to show you all, too. Mm. Yeah, I meant to show it to you all when I first talked about this kind of stuff. Uh, when I first talked about Nickelodeon. I meant to show you all something. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. It's going to take a minute for it to upload. But nonetheless, I meant to show you all this. Listen, this is something that has always happened, beloved. I've told you all about how Brooke Shields, at the age of 12, played in a movie called Pretty Baby. I believe it came out in 1979. And she starred in it with uh, Keith Carradine. David Carradine's brother, and she played a prostitute at the age of 12. And in one scene from the movie, they carried her out on a silver platter, and there was grown folks sitting at the table. Okay, we all know what that is, child corn without the seat at the peak. That's what they did, okay? So that absolutely was done. Not to mention, and when she was older, I believe it was 1980, she played in the Blue Lagoon at the age of 15 with Christopher Atkins. And she had uh, frontal nude scenes in there. Okay, so I'm telling you, and then let's not forget that in the movie Sparkle, the original movie Sparkle, Irene Cara was only 16 years old, supposedly, when she starred as the girlfriend of Philip Michael Thomas, who at the time was 27. 
They said he was 24. He was between 24 and 27. I don't remember exactly, but he was 20 something. I think it was 27, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I just want y'all to pay attention. And so, yeah, this is the stuff they do, which is also nefarious. And you ask yourselves, how do they get away with this? But the main thing we should be asking ourselves is why do the parents allow it? Well, because they clearly want and need the money. That's clearly what that's all about, beloveds, because the parents do have the right to say no. But you heard what she said. She said that, that she was so afraid she was going to lose her job that her and her mother objected to it. But I guess they went ahead and caved to it, to the pressure. This happens all the time. This is nothing new. And here's the thing. Some people may just be finding out about this stuff, but I've known about this stuff for years. I told y'all, the, those of you who followed me on Facebook from back when I used to be on there, I told you all about that whole Disney thing, and I showed y'all the receipts. Not just when I exposed Disney, but when I showed you all the stuff that's in their cartoons, maybe I need to revisit that. The, the, the subliminal things in the Disney cartoons that are clearly nefarious. Okay, I showed you all that. I mean, let me give you an example. In the movie Aladdin, there is a scene when Aladdin climbs through the young girl's window and then he whispers in her ear ever so gently and says, take your clothes off. Why is he saying that in a Disney movie? There is a video that I showed you all when they were showing Mickey Mouse, and this is in black and white, so you know it was an old cartoon, where Mickey Mouse is making Swiss cheese on an assembly line and he's poking the holes in the cheese with his cucumber. Okay, I'm sorry. What about on The Lion King when Simba went rolling down the hill and the sand kicked up in the air and spelled out the word S-E-X? Yeah, this has been going on. I just want y'all to pay attention. This has been going on, okay? It's all nefarious at the end of the day. It's all nefarious, beloveds. This is what they have always done. It's nothing new. Now, I'm waiting for that video to download. So while that's downloading, let's continue. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Another thing is, I forgot to show you all. Um, I forgot to show you all a couple of receipts on the Diddy video on the backup channel, but we'll get into that. Also, let me just tell you about something. I have some more information on Diddy too. So I'm going to be doing an upload after this live. Okay, I'm going to do an upload. Now, this story that I'm about to show you is about a woman who fought off a kidnapper who was trying to take her daughter when the daughter returned home. And it was likely for SEX trafficking, okay? Also nefarious. This, this woman fought him off and then uh, they were able to capture him when some of the male neighbors got involved. Okay, so please pay attention. So... Hold on. I'm going to show you all this video first because I've got it uploaded right now. It's almost done. You might as well go ahead and finish this story up before we go to the next. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. All right. There's 424 people in the chat. Uh, please let the likes match that. Now, I want you all to pay attention because when I tell you this stuff has been going on, it absolutely has. Watch this. This is a game show for kids that came out in about the 70s. Okay. Please pay attention. It's comfortable up here. For the start of the game, the producers would take the mothers off the set, bring them backstage, and make sure they can't see or hear what's going on. That way they can't hear their child's answers and cheat to win the game. This was the perfect trap for Fergie and Catherine to take advantage of the children. Hugs and kisses. Hugs and kisses. I should have known a sweet looking gal like you would pick that one. Once the mothers were off stage, the hosts would get very close to the kids. Most of the time, Fergie would have his hand on the backs of these children, or in places we can't be sure of. The children most of the time are visibly uncomfortable. They don't look nervous because what's there to be nervous about, right? And I get it. It's TV. There's an audience. Their mothers aren't around. But if you look through most game shows involving children, the producers want the kids to be as comfortable as possible to get the best results. Where would Aaron say you'd wear a cummerbund? On my waist on your waist. That way they aren't just staring into space and being quiet. Plus the mothers didn't look at ease either. Okay, been doing it, nothing new. This is what they have been doing to people's children. But hold on, let me just tell you all this because I almost forgot about this. 
And so this is what a guy said. He said, it was decades ago. I was hired to direct a film. I'm going to show this on screen, as a matter of fact. This is all nefarious. Can you all see that? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so here's what a guy said. He says, it was decades ago. I was hired to direct a film about two girls going to a boarding school. But when I found out they asked the parents to not be present and to wait for them somewhere else, I thought it was odd. Now, I want you to pay attention to that. Because isn't that what they said about this game show that I just showed you? That they wanted the parents to be in a whole nother room and under the guise of, well, if you're right here with them, you can cheat and they can tell you the answers or you can tell them the answers. So that was their excuse. So it goes on to say that they wanted the parents to be present and wait for them somewhere else. Or I'm sorry, not to be present and to wait for them somewhere else. I thought it was odd. I asked one of the producers to show me his union card and what film he had worked on before. He said he didn't have it on him and he named several films. I was only familiar with one, but since internet was new, uh, then I made a direct call to the film's union. He never worked on that film. So he was lying. I called the police detective bureau immediately. They arrived quickly with the cops, stopped the elevators and came up the stairway. The producer and three others were wanted for child corn with a P instead of a C and were taken in. I had all my IDs plus a student ID for the film department at my school. Uh, so they told me to just come to the station with the parents to fill out reports. Now listen to this part. The parents were in tears and the parents were in tears except, except one who didn't speak English well and cursed me out, said I ruined her daughter's career. Okay, yeah, some of these parents, they will absolutely allow these things to go on because they want the money and the fame. I was like, if I didn't react, your daughter would have been ruined, period. This is nothing new since the 80s. But that's what y'all pay attention. It was even going on before the 80s. Because like I told you all, when I did that expose on Disney, that allegedly Walt Disney was in love with the young boy who played Peter Pan. And I do believe his name was Danny Driscoll. Let me look that up real quick. Because this is nothing new, like I said. And likes up, everyone, please like and share. Yeah, his name was Danny Driscoll. And you know what, what happened to him? If I'm not mistaken, he went on to be uh, have a, bun a bunch of drug and alcohol problems. And he died at a very young age of heart failure. And uh, the heart failure that he died from it was caused by advanced atherosclerosis. I hope I'm saying that right. Athers, atherosclerosis uh, from drug from drug use. Okay, so he was on drugs. No identification was on the body and photos shown around the neighborhood yielded no positive identification at the time. That's what happened to poor little Danny Driscoll. I'm sorry, Bobby Driscoll. His name was Bobby Driscoll, not Danny. Okay. This is what happens. They've been doing this low down stuff. Now let's go to this video of uh, the woman whose daughter was about to be kidnapped. Um, just another woman says, my husband said, how do you know when they are lying, when their lips are moving? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And then Claudette says, wow, but they, but then they lock up R. Kelly and Bill Cosby, uh, shaking my head. Wow. Not that I'm condoning in any way. However, the energy just don't match match up now. Exactly. Exactly. And Bill Cosby should never have been prosecuted in the first place. That's why he's now out. Okay? So pay attention. Okay? This is all crazy. This is all crazy. So with that all being said, let me pull up this video. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance, beloveds. 
Uh, let's watch this video about this man who tried to kidnap this teenager. Terrifying moments all captured on camera. A teen entering her queen's apartment is ambushed by a masked man. Watch again. A man dressed in camo, jumping her from behind, forcefully grabbing the teen and dragging her away. The woman chasing after her is her mother, Adriana Alvarez. I never heard her scream like that. You weren't thinking about your safety at that point? No. No, absolutely not. No. No, it's my baby. Can't take her. Adriana followed as the man continued to drag her daughter away. The three kicking and fighting all the way down four flights of stairs. The harrowing ordeal unfolding this past January as her 18-year-old daughter Lex was coming back home after finishing a morning dog walk. He managed to grab my hair through the door. I remember being thrown onto the, the heater. The NYPD identified the suspect as 25-year-old George Vassilou, her daughter's former co-worker. He pled not guilty to a slew of charges related to the attack. Tonight, his attorney not commenting. He's just pepper spraying me. He's punching me. The brawl reaching John Velez's first floor apartment. I heard her screaming. She ran to my apartment. I started chasing him. He, he ran across the street. Enter neighbor Gus Bugas, who ran after him. And I threw him on the floor. And once I got on top of him, he couldn't go nowhere. Alvarez says she suffered a dislocated shoulder and eye injury. Her daughter amazingly sustaining minor knee scrapes. Price of a mom putting herself in harm's way, but coming up a hero. Yeah, I just had angels by my side. I'm just so grateful and so thankful just to have her back. George Solis, NBC News, New York. Shout out to that mother and the neighbors who helped. Low down, dirty devil. What was he going to do to that poor young girl? Well, we already know what he was probably going to do. Okay, Prince of Paraphernalia said, oh, he'd been planning to do that to her. Yes, absolutely. And he likely had followed her home before, so he knew where she lived. A former co-worker, okay? This is all so crazy. Yes, that's the devil, Queen Sam, absolutely. Okay, I'm so glad the mother heard her screaming and ran out there to, to fight for her child, because this is all crazy. Now, let's talk about Mace, because on Mace and Cameron's podcast, Mace clearly threw shade at Diddy. Please pay attention. And I think it was Reggie who said uh, on the other video that Mace was probably somewhere eating popcorn. <laughs> okay. So do you have a message to Anthony Davis that you would like to say? Anthony Davis, the talk is good. You know, let, the, the talk is perfectly good, but we're, we're still waiting on you to take over the team and to make sure that the team make it to the playoffs. That's what all... Big dogs, paws, and alphas do. No diddy, you know? <laughs> I don't know, Brad. <laughs> Why did this sound extra funny when you... I don't know who it is. <laughs> it definitely does. I don't, it does, right? I, yeah. It just got a different um something to it. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. No diddy. Uh, so with that all being said, <laughs> Jim and I said hashtag no Diddy, okay? And now they're calling him Flea Diddy, okay? Because he clearly was trying to flee. He had it all mapped out, thought he was going to go to the Bahamas and leave his kids to take the fall. Isn't that low down and dirty? Just going to leave them holding the bag. All right, Flea Diddy, we see you. Anyway, with that all being said... <laughs> Queen Sam said, between Mace and 50, we can expect a lot more jokes. Oh, you already know. You already know. You can definitely expect more from uh from 50. He is as petty as they come. Okay, please make no mistake. <laughs> uh, with that all being said, I'm going to conclude this broadcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in once again. Please be sure to like and share. <laughs> Golden Child said, no diddy, no doubt. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Reggie. Reggie said great broadcast. Thank you. So, like I said, I'm gonna be uploading shortly um a video with more information about Diddy. All right, so play 
please stay tuned and pay attention. Okay, so everyone enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your life. Gold all in my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all in pop fives How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get mad <laughs> So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they necks Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people are waking Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin all in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? skin. God all in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done.